求他相见。October 21st in the lunar calendar is the most important day of the year in Dipu village. At around 9 in the morning, all the elders from the village who are over 70 gather in the Shantu ancestral hall. Everyone, pay homage to the ancestors. Bow once, bow twice. There are approximately 2,500 residents in Dipu village. 80% of them have the surname Shentu. Since the founding of the Southern Song Dynasty, Shentu Li married into the Fan family in Dipu village. There have been 42 generations of the Shentu family up to now. Today, they pay homage to their ancestors by remembering the teachings to always observe filial piety. Filial piety is an honored tradition in the village. We shall teach this proud tradition to the younger generations. So this will be passed down from generation Two generation. After the solemn ancestral ritual, the village holds a feast in the ancestral hall. This feast is only for those who are over 70 years old. While the seniors enjoy their feast, the chef festival begins. This is a festival for respecting the elderly, and it lasts three days. Dipu village is an ancient village on the south bank of Fuchun River. It has a history of more than 1,000 years. To the east of the village, there is a long stream that has been there since ancient times. The stream nourishes the whole village, and silver grass lines its banks, hence the name Dipu Village. Since the Ming and Qing dynasties, local peasants would pay homage to the earth god and the crop god when the crops would ripen. On October 21st in the lunar calendar, they show their gratitude for a good harvest. They say that respecting one's parents is like respecting the gods. Over the years, the Shaf festival became the day for respecting the aged. It lasts three days, and all the celebrating takes place with the elderly as the focal point. Friends, relatives, neighbors, even strangers are invited to celebrate. Whichever household has the most guests would be blessed with greater longevity. Shentu Bai Chong is 66. His wife, Shentu Asu, is 63. They have been busy since early morning. Today, their eldest daughter's family will visit for the Shef Festival. Mochi, wheat paste cake, and rice cake are their five-year-old granddaughter's favorites. 
Do you visit often? Yes, we visit often. I see that you've brought some fish and meat. My mom is 63 and my dad is 66. At this age, their married daughters are often required to visit them in the Shea festival. They have to come back? No matter how far away. It doesn't matter how far the children are living away from home. They have to visit on the Shea festival. Shentu Jian Yu is working in Guangxi, which is 1,500 kilometers away from the village. Children from the village don't often come back to visit, which makes it a major event. Shentu Jian Yu and her family flew in from Guangxi early in the morning. According to local tradition, mothers should make rice dumplings, which signify family reunion, and daughters bring them to the in-laws as gifts. This tradition has been passed down in the Yuchang house for hundreds of years. The house has almost 300 descendants all over the country. Ever since the establishment of the house, filial piety has been at the root for the proliferation of the family. It's been over 100 That's years? That's right. Do you know who built this place? It was the grandfather of the grandfather of my grandfather. Many generations. It was many generations ago. I saw that it says here to live a hard-working and thrifty life. This is the family doctrine from the ancestors. And it's been passed down through yes. the generations. Yes, that's right. To live a hard-working and thrifty life and to observe filial piety have been advocated by Master Payo, who came to amass a great fortune by trading raw paper. In the ninth year, during the reign of Emperor Guangxu, he built the Yuchang house. He used stairwells and hallways to connect all eight rooms. This way, the families of his three sons could see each other and have a place where they could spend time. Shen Tu Jian Yu is now 35. She has never forgotten the teachings of filial piety from her childhood. This time around, her most important task is to cook her mother fish and her father a symbolic meat dish. The bigger the fish is, the more prosperous they will be. The braced pork that she cooks for her father shall be cut into 66 pieces. The pieces are to be neatly cut and exactly the same size. This represents the particular care that the daughter gives to her father. Here comes the food. The main dish. This is for father. It looks really good. Now that the dishes are ready, are there any rules to eating them? My father will take the first bite. He's 66, here's to his health and longevity. And the fish is for my mother. The carp jumped onto the beach and my mother shall live to be 93 years old. Here, to the health and longevity of our parents. You are getting younger each day. After lunch, Shen Tu Jian Yu and her husband Huang Changlin go to Toja Pond with the red carp they bought today. In the village, there is a saying that when a mother reaches 63, the carp shall jump onto the beach. The daughter puts the carp back into the water, hoping her parents can overcome all their difficulties and live a long, healthy life. The reason why the water in the river is so clear is that its source is fresh water. The tradition of filial piety here began with a 1,000-year-old well next to Yochang House. It's the oldest piece of infrastructure in the village. Why is there a well named after the Fan family in a village dominated by the Shentus? It all started from Shentu Li, who married into the Fan family. Back then, the village was called the Fan village. Shentu Li had been treated well by the Fan family. As a token of his gratitude, he established the Fan well as the main well, so that future generations would never forget the Fan family charity. Even though our family name is Shun Tu, our bloodline is tied forever to this family. Does his preservation of the well signify his respect towards mothers? This is passing filial piety through generations. In the generations that have followed, the descendants consider the proliferation of the family as an homage to mothers. They built houses around the main well. By the middle of the Ming Dynasty, 
the Shentus had established a raw paper workshop by taking advantage of their abundant water resources. The genealogy of the Shentus states that the paper-making industry was booming back then. During the reign of Emperor Dao Guang, nine out of 10 villagers made a living through making paper. Soon, the villagers became wealthy from making and trading raw paper. There are a lot of buildings, from the middle of the Ming to the Qing dynasty, like courtyard houses. Some have three courtyards, some have two. Some of the most beautiful ancient buildings in the village were built back then, because they had this source of income. They made money by making paper. The Fan Well not only provided a great story of a loving father-son relationship, but it is also very important to the Shantou family. By the Ming and Qing dynasties, there were over 1,000 residents in Dipu village. More than 200 houses were built around the Fan Well. Master Payo, an affluent businessman, built a two-story mansion with two courtyards next to the Fan Well that spanned 220 square meters. It is now known as Yuchang House. As a representative of affluent business people, Master Payo started organizing charity events to build ancestral halls and compile genealogies. In the Shantou family book, the person who was most outstanding in filial piety was Shantou Kaiji. Shantou Kaiji was from Tonglu. He was a great observer of filial piety ever since his childhood. In adulthood, he strived to take good care of his father who suddenly took ill. The doctors were not hopeful about the illness, and they thought his father had a dim chance at recovery. He would suck out the pus from his father's wounds and lick clean any blood, eventually healing his father. For Shentu Kaiji, no act was too small when it came to taking care of one's parents. He would warm his parents' bed with his own body during the winter and stay up to repel mosquitoes and fan his parents during the summer. When his father fell ill, he would travel hundreds of miles to seek doctor's help. 16 years after Shen Tukaiji passed away, the villagers submitted a report about his filial piety, which after a close inspection, finally reached the central government. In a few months, the entire Dipu village started a grand project to honor their families. This order comes from the emperor himself. Now that Kaiji is dead, Chinese people consider his reputation to be a legacy that he has left. He was a great observer of filial piety through and through. Here it says, Xiang Yi Jie Bing. This is an honor. It's a title similar to what we would call today an outstanding worker or an employee of the year. Emperor Qianlong, who put a great emphasis on filial piety, was deeply moved by Shentu Kaiji's stories. He approved a plan to build a memorial arch in Dipu village. On the arch, Emperor Qianlong gave his official approval of Shentu Kaiji's filial piety. He believed that children's filial piety is the core of all virtues and serves as a foundation of a person's universal love. Pang Lin, a history professor at Tsinghua University, believes that the ancient emperors always cited filial piety as the rationale of their policies to rule the people. Universal love was considered to be crucial throughout ancient China. Loving one's parents is the start of universal love. Once you have established that, then you take everybody's parents as your own parents. You put yourself in others' shoes. If everyone can behave like this, then everyone would be kind and everyone would be loving. Then ruling the country would be twice as easy. A small village like this one received rewards from the emperor himself for filial piety. The villagers took this reward as a blessing from the gods, and Emperor Chen Long encouraged them to always observe filial piety to preserve it. Travelers who passed through Dipu would pay homage to the virtue of filial piety. Government officials would step out of their vehicles when they arrived at the village to show respect. In the 200 years that followed, the memorial arch and the old house of the sun have become symbols of the culture here. 13 years ago, 73-year-old Shentu Dafu saw that Kaiji's house was in a state of disrepair. 
He started to worry. He did not want the 300-year-old tradition to die in his hands. Shentu Defu decided to renovate the Langui House. His son, Shentu Zhongjun, who was working in Beijing, rushed back home after learning this. He was deeply moved by what he saw. It rained often then, so it was really hard work. During the early stages of the renovation, the tiles on the roof had all been torn off the entire house. My father was living in a house that was not sheltered from the rain. Uh, he was really old. He was over 70. The rain was making things worse. He became so worried that he fell gravely ill. Even eating became a hard task for him. Eventually, he had to be intubated. Shentu Zhongjun regretted that he directed all his attention to his work and failed to practice filial piety. He put his work aside and took care of his sick father all while repairing the house. In our family, in terms of taking care of one's parents, the most basic level is to make sure that they have food and shelter as well. We shall take care of them until the end of their lives. That is the bare minimum. It is not enough to just look after their physical health. You have to make them happy. In order to fulfill his father's wish of repairing the old house, Shen Tu Zhongjun hired three carpenters from a nearby city. For the house's rotting wooden carvings, they would take down and repair one piece at a time, looking at pictures of each part and then repairing them. Shen Tu Zhongjun, who was trained in carving himself, helped throughout the process. It took six years to repair the house. On the day of the She Festival, in the now renovated Langui house, Shen Tu Zhongjun is up early to clean. He is about to hang a portrait as well as couplets with the help of his daughter. This one is our ancestor, Shen Tu Kaiji. He was officially recognized as an observer of filial piety during the reign of Emperor Qianlong. I am his ninth generation grandson. My father used to say we shall practice filial piety for our parents and we shall teach our descendants the same. When Shen Tu Zhongjun was a boy, his father would often bring him to look at Kai Chi's portrait and teach him what he should aspire for in life. 300 years ago, Shen Tu Kai Ji wanted to fulfill his father's dying wish, which was renovating the Langui house. Now, Shen Tu Zhongjun is fulfilling his father's wishes by also renovating the house. And in doing so, he is carrying on the tradition of filial piety. Tell me about the gate. Did it always look like this? Have you restored it to what it was before? Yes, basically the same. This is what it looked like before I renovated the house 11 years ago. As you can see, it was quite dilapidated and in a state of terrible disrepair. As is said in the Book of Rites, an observer of filial piety shall be obedient and make his parents happy. In renovating the house, Shen Tu Zhongjun has fulfilled his father's wishes. Now that his father is happier, he no longer needs to be intubated. He can eat solid food, has a much better appetite, and has recovered. The villagers are extremely proud of Shen Tu Zhongjun for what he did to Langui House. During the holidays in Kaiji's house, Shen Tu Zhongjun teaches the local children his filial piety course. He hopes that children will recognize the importance of filial piety at an early age. You should respond immediately when your parents call you. Don't wait too long before you respond to them. If your parents have a request for you, you must do it as soon as they ask you to do it. Make sure you don't put it off or slack off. Help your mother to do the dishes and help them take out the trash. They say you will understand how hard it is to be a parent once you become one yourself. In Dipu village, there is a well-known story of a daughter who was good to her parents. In the Ming Dynasty, a Shantou family living next to Baoxing House had a daughter with big feet called Shantou Miaoyu. She married into the Yao family at the age of 15 and was widowed at 34. She moved back in with her parents who took good care of her 
It was during that time that she gave birth to her fourth son, Yao Kui. He was raised by his uncle, who also educated him. Then he became an officer who was in charge of personnel. This was equivalent to being the head of the organization department of the Central Committee. His uncle paid him a visit, saying that they raised him. Now that he had made a name for himself and was respected, it was a great honor for the family. And he thought he should do something to show his gratitude. On the one hand, he was grateful to his family for raising him. On the other, to the emperor for recognizing him. Following his mother's advice, Yao Kui started renovating the Shentu Ancestral Temple and built a stage in the hall. On his uncle's birthday, he presented the stage to his uncle as well as everyone in his mother's family. That's the origin of Bao Qing House. That's how Yao Kui showed filial yes. piety. Now, filial piety has an even deeper meaning than before. Being loyal to one's country is the greatest filial piety. Preserving one's own traditions is the smaller filial piety. There are two different types. Yao's mother named the stage Bao Qing House. It became a tradition that every year, married daughters would invite troops to put on shows about filial piety. On this particular afternoon of the Shi Festival, Married daughters of the village have commissioned the Yue Opera troupe to perform there. They are staging an old favorite, five daughters celebrating mother's birthday. Yao Kui has been deeply influenced by his mother's education on filial piety and has spent his entire life trying to practice what he has learned. He has earned a sense of accomplishment from taking care of his parents and being loyal to the emperor. His mother was made an imperial mandated madam due to how she educated her son on filial piety. Her embroidered shoes found in Bao Qing house are even put to use whenever there is a wedding in the village. When daughters of the village get married, and this applies to every family that lives here in the village, the daughters would come here to look at and try on the shoes. This signifies a good blessing and conveys the moral that they should practice filial piety towards their in-laws. These 40 centimeter long shoes were made by the villagers to honor their daughters-in-law's filial piety. Shentu Miao Yu's husband soon died after she married into the Yao family. The woman known for her big feet served her parents-in-law diligently. And her story is known among the Dipu villagers. Deng Guasheng, who is 84 years old, married into Dipu village at the age of 18. She tried on the shoes and heard the story. She is an observer of filial piety. Ten years ago, her five sons all became family men and worked away from home. It was rare for the entire family to get together. The two elders were left on their own and were not happy. Shan Tu Fang, the wife of their sixth son, noticed this and decided to give up her job in Hangzhou. My parents-in-law are quite old, and I had not been taking care of them. I really wanted to come back home and spend some time with them. I hope to have enough time to be with them and have conversations with them. Mm. Company is very important for elders. Yes, indeed it is. They are a little bit like children in that they need our love and attention, so it's important. Shen Tu Fang, who doesn't talk much with her in-laws, started seeking topics to discuss and insisted on having three meals a day with them. She found out that her father-in-law, who used to work in relics conservation, had volunteered to work as an ancient building conservationist. He collects farming tools that the villagers no longer use. It was with this in mind that she started collecting these farming tools with her father-in-law when she had the time. What is this? It's a fish basket. A fish basket? Right. Look, here is how it works. You hang it, and when you are catching fish, you store them in the basket, which is hung like There's this. There's also a pipe. Yes, that's right. He has used this before? That's correct. Shen Tu Fang has helped her father-in-law collect hundreds of farming tools and other things. The villagers have been deeply moved by her filial piety. People took notice and established the rural museum in Dipu village. Shen Tu Fang believes you should take care of the elders not just in your family, but other people's families as well. 
She helps us to carry things we cannot lift anymore. She helps all of you? Yes, and she volunteers. Her in-laws are lucky to have a daughter-in-law like that. She is one in a million. With Shen Tu Fang taking the initiative, the wives of other sons have joined in to help. Now that the daughters-in-law are doing such a great job, their sons are working hard as well. They are building new houses in the village and planning to move back home to be closer to their parents. For Shen Tu Guo Chu and his wife, this is a blessing. Regarding filial piety, I think it is vital that you understand what your elders want, and you must obey their wishes. That's what I think is great about Shen Tu Fang. Her father-in-law likes farming tools, and she joined in. She even found a place for him to exhibit all of the tools collected. The elders consider that a perfect example of filial piety. On the day of the She festival, Shen Tu Guo Chu and his wife are busy preparing for their children to come home. Four generations will celebrate his 88th birthday. There are many elders in Dipu village who are also around the same age, while there are over 100 people who are over 80 years old. When asked why they are able to live such long lives, their answers are invariably because of the filial piety from their children. In the Shantu's family genealogy, their ancestors set up eight family rules. Filial piety is the first rule and is written like this. Respecting your parents is like respecting the gods. It is the purest and truest expression of the Shentu's love towards their parents and shows respect for their civilization. October 23rd of the lunar calendar is the last day of the three-day Shea festival. Dipu village has now gone back to its previous state of peace and quiet. Everyone is preparing for the coming winter. The roots of filial piety run deep in Dipu village, and everything will flourish again in the coming spring. Shaijiang Cheers. 